Let's take this cranky cart into a crank and start. Boy, that couldn't be any corny. <laughs> Let's get into this one. All right, guys, here we have a 1996 Yamaha G14A. This is a gas cart. This one here is a crank, no start. So no amount of choke or throttle is giving us anything other than just a little bit of crank. So we're gonna get this thing pushed up here on the ramps. We're gonna check for spark first, just to make sure that that's not our problem. Let's get it up on the ramps. We'll pull the seat off and get into it. All right, so the first thing I wanna try is I wanna actually check and see if we have spark still, because if we don't, then not getting fuel isn't gonna matter. We'll have to figure out the spark situation first. I don't really think this is the problem. In fact, that wasn't even tight. That wasn't even tight. So many times I come across these engine issues. It's a brand new plug, BPR2ES. This is not my plug, but it doesn't even look like it's had any spark to it. So let's see what we got here. Okay, we have good spark. Nice and strong. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on camera. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't come through. Actually, I'm gonna bring you in. I wanna see if you guys can see this. So when checking spark, this is what I do. Spark plug out of the spark plug hole. That way the engine can free spool. And then just plug the spark plug in and lay it on something metal. I don't know if that's gonna come across on camera or not. Uh, I'm not holding that. But I can clearly see spark. It does, it lights up nice and bright. So lots of lightning there. Put the spark, spark plug back in. I'm gonna actually tighten it down like it's supposed to be. I squash the washer and then I go by feel. I know what it feels, what it's supposed to feel like when you tighten them up. So we give it a little bit of choke vary the throttle so we know that didn't fix the problem so we know that we still have a no fuel issue now so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull off the air box here or the uh, the intake yep quarter inch it's not the stock tube or clamp all right See if I can actually choke this like this. I, I think we just have fuel delivery problems. Oh, look at that. It sucked my glove in. Ah, oh, it ripped it. Now I gotta go get another pair of gloves. So what I'm gonna do now, actually, is I'm gonna see if I can get the... First of all, let's make sure there's actually... Check our fuel filter. All right, so the fuel filter is installed upside down. Fuel flow is this way, and they have the filter on backwards. Before I go any farther here, let's, uh, before I even get into pulling the carburetor off, because I bet you there's just no gas. All right. Loosen this up more. We're going to be changing this anyway, so yeah, they had it in up, upside down. Let's put a new fuel filter on it. Oh, actually, I'm going to date the fuel filter first. Where's my black? See, I like to use I like to use these paint markers. I do month, day, year format as to what that is what we are accustomed to in the USA. United States of America. This, the end of this fuel line is a bit funky here as well. So I'm gonna just take a pair of linesman pliers. I know it's not the right tool for this, but it's the first tool I grabbed and basically just cut off this end 
So now that fuel line feels a lot better. We'll slip this in. I'm gonna crank it over to see if I can get it to pull. Okay, so the fuel pump is not pulling any fuel. Uh, what I'm gonna do is disconnect, looks like somebody's already kind of started beating me to that. I'm gonna disconnect the, ah, screw the glove, the fuel line right here at the pump. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna need to replace it. So I'm grabbing gently, just trying to get the line to break free, which I don't think it's going to. Um, can I get to the fuel line on the carburetor side? Let's see, let's go here. Probably, I know my big head's in the way, I'm sorry. Okay, fuel line is moving. Let's see if I can grab it and pull it off of here. Carefully. It's very stiff, so I'm probably gonna end up changing some of these fuel lines if necessary. Okay, I got the fuel line off of the carburetor. I'm gonna put this here, which is my little catch thingy. And we're gonna see if we can get this pump to pump. I bet you just from sitting, we're gonna have to reprime the system. Okay, so there's our problem. We're not getting fuel. It's not even pulling. So typically what I'll do is I'll just blow into the gas tank, but because this gas smells so nasty and really crap, I'm gonna take a little blow gun thing here for the air compressor. I'm gonna put it on. And there's one of these things here. I'm gonna blow into the air or the fuel tank and see if we get a little bit of gas. Uh, I'm, I'm also gonna be watching the fuel filter to see if it fills. Yep, fuel filter's filling. I'm gonna see if it'll push through the pump. Sometimes these will, sometimes they won't. I don't really like to do that too much and pressurize that tank too much because you are taking an extremely combustible fuel, turning it into vapor when you pressurize the tank. Now I just want to see if, ah, look at that. Now we got fuel flow. Okay. So we have fuel flow now, so that's a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna put the cap back on here. Let's move this air hose out of the way. I'm gonna actually just plug it back in to the carb. Actually, I'm gonna cut. Do I have enough here? No, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change this fuel line because it is awfully stiff. So I'm gonna grab this kind of hard and probably gonna have to cut that off of there. Um, this fuel line is really stiff and what happens when they stiffen up like that, they cause air to leak by and it, it creates a whole bunch of problems. So I'm, I'm gonna just replace the fuel lines. Just got, taking a utility knife and basically trying to separate the fuel line without cutting myself open from the pump, because it is basically adhered to the, the pump here. Let's see. Sometimes you gotta grab them with the pliers and peel them back. Carburetor cleaner in there and hope it uh, disintegrates that uh, rubber. This can is almost empty, so it's gonna take a little bit. You guys can see what I'm doing here. Fuel pumps down in here right underneath the beeper. So I'm gonna actually get this out of the way. So hopefully, get the zip tie out of the way. So maybe you can actually see what the flock I'm doing under here. Okay. Let me use a pair of dikes here. See if I can gnaw at this a little bit. This does not warrant replacing the fuel pump. Just you gotta work at digging away the old fuel line. And sometimes it could take a little bit of time because it's 
probably the original fuel line that's been on here for all these years. It's just amazing how the rubber, it basically like it vulcanizes almost and becomes part of the fuel pump. Another big chunk of it right there. There's still a healthy amount of rubber in the bottom of this. And this is one of these like three pack Amazon basics crappy utility knife. So it's just a terrible utility knife. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I'll just route this to the carb. See, it's no big deal if it gets stuck on the carburetor because usually that's got to come out anyway. Uh, I'll use my linesman pliers here to... See, I like the linesman pliers because it cuts a nice, flat, clean, smooth hoodie. There we go. Okay, so now I'll put this thing back. I do have to put clamps on. I just want to make sure I can get this to run first. Let's, so let's see what happens. Okay, it is pumping. Let's see if it'll start. Yeah. There we go. That is a successful repair. Now, I think this cart has been sitting for a while. And I think that's what our problem was. It just, it ran dry, but because that fuel line was all crusty and chunky, I really didn't trust leaving it on there and having a callback. Um, whoever installed the fuel filter put it on backwards. So you're not able to see if there's any debris in the fuel line. That's why you put the cone towards, I mean, they even have little arrows on them. You put the fuel, the, air, the cone goes towards the source and then the inside of the filter goes towards the destination. All right, so that's, that's that. New fuel filter. I'll put this back on while I'm here too. That should be, I'm gonna run this around and that should be job done. See, look at that. You guys thought we were gonna have another carb cleaning video and it turned out just to be a fuel system priming. See, you never know what's gonna come through the doors here. Okay, so we'll just verify. Wow, she smokes a lot. Wow, she has got a loud knock. I think they beat the crap out of this. I mean, I didn't even put that pedal to the floor because I know that this governor is cranked to the max and there is no flipping oil in this thing. <sighs> this is the kind of crap that comes through the doors here. Let's see, let's try that again. That's probably why it sounds like a racket. Okay, so it's got oil in it. It's down halfway down the hashes. So it's okay. I mean, it really should have the full amount, but I don't think we're doing anything on this other than getting it running. So we got it running. Let's get some fuel line clamps on those. I personally prefer these squeeze clamps. I know I used to say that I didn't like these squeeze clamps, but I really do. Um, reason why is because they always are adding these are too big. They're always adding more pressure to the line. Um, the you know, the worms, worm gear clamps are nice too, but I just, I just prefer when I have available the, the squeeze clamps. And I have a bunch of new old stock ones here, so we'll use these first. That one there. Pew. This thing is definitely burning oil. It's nice, there's a nice big white cloud just looming by the garage door. Let's see if, oh, this one might actually be big enough for this. Let's say, yeah, I think we're gonna be good. 
take it off of the carb, slide it over, just barely. I'm gonna need my other pliers. I know this isn't a very eventful video, guys. This one is pretty straightforward. Um, customer just wants to get it running. Didn't seem too crazy about wanting to put a lot of money into it, which they've already done. I know I'm in the way, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this clamp on and I can't see what the heck I'm doing here. So I'm gonna move it down. Sometimes you can get them to go on. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's on. If you put the clamp in the right spot, you can sometimes slide them over the barb because it'll, they do expand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do basically is get in touch with the customer, let them know that we got the engine running, let them know what we found, take it from there to see if they want us to pursue anything else with this cart. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, we did a quick oil change after I called the customer. I forgot we had talked about doing that, so that's done. I didn't film it because uh, it's a one quart oil change. I mean, <laughs> how exciting can it be? As you can tell by the, how the lens is all fogged up, it's actually fogging up internally on the camera. So I'm gonna end it right here. It is so humid, it's not even funny, and I gotta go bring the camera into the air conditioning to get it dried out. So I just wanna thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it, as always. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Be sure to ring the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Check out the comment section down below. Leave a comment, question, concern all of that fun jazz. Check the description for links to products I use every single day in making these videos. Everything you buy using those links is a little contribution to the channel and it does help greatly. So all right guys, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.